Greetings. Today we're going to be viewing a 2 vs 3 on the map V Bastion. Um, the 2 vs 3 was between Seton and myself, and we were against Magpie, Lethal, and Twilight. This is a very heavy metal map. Um, not a bad thing. Don't usually play such heavy um jesus don't usually play such heavy metal maps though i mean this is like 20 metal start map like these are each 2.0 it's it's a, it's a little much but they are fun every now and then right so on the left here we have magpie up north twilight in the center and lethal on the on the south side and then on the east side here, we have Setting up top and myself in the center. So, you know, starts. Uh, I assume winds are pretty good on this map. Everyone's building them. Let's speed this up a bit. So this is a really large map. Uh, I think it's like... 30 long maybe I don't remember the height but it's it's pretty huge magpie just made a comment about winds so maybe they aren't that great looks like um I'm I'm starting vehicles Sentin's got vehicles up Uh, Twilight's going vehicles, Lethal's going vehicles, Magpie's going vehicles. Let's we'll speed up a little bit more, huh? Vehicles on a map like this is probably a pretty good idea. Nice, open for the most part, um, and huge. So, pumping out few scouts here we got a con to help get that eco going setting going straight for the geo probably a good idea um, the sooner you get that up your your metal is just kind of it's going to kind of cascade after that because the mexes do cost like 15 energy so you really want to get as much energy on a map like this as you can quick twilight going for that geo as well Sending some scouts in, um, interrupting that geo there, just kind of moving on, seeing if I can't do something against Magpie. Just getting some info, pretty much. Lethal getting a Dragon Claw up in the middle there. Magpie grabbing some uh, water up north here. A little early rating from Sutton. We're sending a lemming scout in. <laughs> I think tides on this map are 30, so titles are really good, really good. Magpie getting titles in the north and the south. I'm working on my first Geo, finally. Seton's got one up, about to get his second one up. Pumping out the scouts right now. All right, so he's getting that up. Looks like Seton has a decent, um, decent force moving in. Uh, a few scouts, some instigators. Probably seeing if he can't get some damage going. Twilight himself is getting a pretty big, um, scout group going up here magpie uh, making exploiters on these patches out here battle of the scouts twilight uh, clearly won that one I've got some flashes coming to intercept and Sun is pumping out the instigators so we should be alright here the weasels are a lot faster. They can definitely outrun, but he kind of just ran into everything. So yeah, Magpie getting exploiters set up on these patches. 
Um, this is generally not the best idea to put exploiters next to each other. Just because when you when you destroy one exploiter, it'll take everything out around it. Um, even even if you put mexes, it's better. Like you can put one exploiter with mexes, but it'll also take out the mexes. You're not losing as much then. Big push coming in. Twilight's intercepting. Magpie's got his commander degunning, and I mean, Twilight does have a pretty considerable force, unfortunately, for us. But yeah, the the exploiters you definitely don't want to just pile up, because you really only need to kill one. They all go up. Unless you put dragon's teeth around like this, then you protect all that firepower, essentially. Twilight coming in with a huge instigator push here. Uh, we do have some blade wings from Seton, which should help out a lot. Uh, he does have a couple gunships mixed in, but once those blade wings hit, they're just going to paralyze, and unless he um, issues a new move command, they're just going to keep running into, into us. He did make it to my base. Um, looks like he got my vehicle plant. Which isn't too big of an issue because now I'm just going to be able to focus on everything else more. I, I have a real issue of doing too much, so no big deal. He gave, basically gave me some more metal to work on other things. Looks like I'm making a uh, push in the water here probably have some subs yeah we've got some subs and some skeeters going in some pincers and lemmings coming in from lethal with some shodens from magpie they didn't have any defenses in the water here uh, probably a mistake no not even any ships to defend so i was able to just come in and wipe them out of the water which there was quite a few titles. They probably lost a couple hundred energy. Big push coming in from all three of them. Um, lots of instigators from Twilight. Magpie's not pushing in with his Shodans. I feel like if Hattie pushed in with the Shodans, they could have done a lot more damage here. The Shodans would have torn the K-Bots up, and I mean, it's a considerable group, too. But he waited, the HLT got put up, the Guardian got put up. Had he pushed in with that, they probably could have knocked out these K-Bot Labs. We do have quite a few um, fighters and just air support. Air support going up to help out. We have a hover push coming in from Magpie on the south here. Luckily, we've got some air support, some gunships, and I had a group of um, skimmers of my own. And anacondas, apparently. Setting piling and K-Bots in the center. They do have advanced. They got a Moho Exploiter up. Setting trying to uh, shell it from behind the spire here. Looks like neither one can hit. Big hover push coming in the uh, the north side there. Well, Twilight keeping keeping those big instigator pushes coming through. Looks like they do have a behemoth up down here. Um, that'll be pretty hard to push. Seton's taking out these titles. It's probably another, like, it's probably close to at least a thousand energy right there. We didn't manage to knock these exploiters out, though. So we, Magpie probably just took a pretty big hit to his metal and energy. Magpie does have a decent uh, group of hovers down here, though.
I do have some naval. I do have some hovers of my own. He probably... Well, he's got some defenses up here. I think the south side is the weakest side. He did send his hovers up to help protect his tremors here. Um, those tremors, if they get close enough, could do some really good damage to our front line. Setting with the K-Bot. Setting's really pulling this team together here. Uh, let's take a let's take a pause real quick. Setting's really keeping things together uh, with that front line there. So he's doubling my energy right now. Um, energy wise, one or fifty eight for me, one twenty two for Setting and them. We've got Twilight one twelve, Lethal one o two, Magpie. Of, up at 200 so they're making about 400 energy 414 and we are at 190 I think 780 Just quick math not my thing so they are doubling our metal income um, pooled so we're we're in a pretty bad spot I'm not doing the best um, you see Setton's actually grabbed his resources. I haven't touched any of mine. Uh, I've just been too focused on doing things that don't matter as much. <laughs> been too focused on spending metal, not getting more of it. Um, they do have most of theirs grabbed, uh, maybe. So they do have a few um, they could grab here. Lethal could grab. Uh, these two patches help out with his metal income. Twilight's doing pretty good on grabbing metal. Uh, he's grabbing that. I mean, once you have 100 metal, you, you're doing pretty good. Um, he's got a deep core up, which I think on this map give like 80, which is just insane. I wonder. They give 82.9. It's absolutely insane. Um, Magpie's got a deep core up. We are not really doing advanced eco stuff yet it looks like he just got an advanced k-bot up on the front line uh, i probably wouldn't probably wouldn't have put that so far up like it's in front of his regular ones as well i probably would have put that a little bit behind all all of everything else Cause they're pushing pretty hard at this point. They're coming in on the A lab. Looks like they're gonna. Yeah, they got the A lab. Chainsaws destroying <laughs> the pit bull. <laughs> they pretty much wiped him out of here. They got all his labs. It's just mine, which isn't producing. Not producing like his was. Trying to get my hovers up here to uh, assist, pump out some warriors, but they pretty much die out the gate. I do have a few mumbos, which are basically advanced shodens. Arm side though. And Twilight coming in with a mass of tanks. Huge tanks here. Luckily, we've got some HLTs, some pit bulls. We aren't completely undefended, but this is a lot of stuff. Them coming up north is probably really, really lucky on our part since there was half of a wall. So they all pretty much got funneled into the same spot. But I mean, you see, Setton's up here shelling them. I, I was so focused on that push there. Um, Setton has advanced naval up and he's shelling their resources. Let me slow this down a bit. Just a bit because I am not keeping up. So Twilight's got all his units here. It looks like they're in range of just being shelled too. He's got a he's got a cane up. I really um I really think one of the places I went wrong was not taking control of the water. I didn't I didn't um I didn't grab any of this, right? I could have grabbed a lot of this metal water. I should have gone advanced naval. Um, they were doing huge land stuff. We could have just kind of 
you know, made some units to run interference for the defenses and really just defended that. And, I mean, look at the damage he's doing from the water. If this was happening on both sides, we could have been doing great. Like, right now, they're kind of giving us pushback. They are out-resourcing us. Uh, looks like I have... Pause real quick. Looks like I have stepped up my metal game. Uh, <laughs> last we looked, though, was at, like, 50... 58 metal, um, setting. he's jumped up to 250 and I'm at 196, so combined we're at like 3, we're at about 4, we're pretty close to 450, just shy. Um, Twilight's at 195, Magpie at 177, and Lethal at 83, that's, that's what, that's 273, they're at about 450 as well. So right now we're pretty even metal wise. Um, Twilight is leading the game in terms of energy. He's he's the only one in six digits right now. Everyone else is hovering around seven thousand. So that's probably helping them out a lot. Though it looks like energy is not a huge issue for anybody. Some of us are struggling a little bit. Mine my, my E is kind of have well yeah set and struggling on E too. Twilight losing a lot of stuff to shelling. Um, he's parking it in the same spot. He probably changed that because I feel like Seton had pretty much just marked it. And now he's keeping the armies down. Uh, lots of tanks made it through here, but we do have tons of gunships. Got my hovers on the scene. So that's not a problem, but their whole front line is getting taken out by setting here <laughs> twilight thought you guys were gonna take water i'm i'm being murdered over here <laughs> see like this is probably about his reach if i was down here i would be able to shell the rest of it um i really should have gone advanced if i didn't do anything else in the water i do have um i do have the shipyard still but I really should have gone advanced. Twilight, he's just getting shelled out. I think he lost some metal there. Hitting Magpie now, getting the stuff up here. Sentin's really doing some work for us. Magpie did get some torpedo bombers up though. See if he can't sh um, get this out of here. Unfortunately, you know, if you hide by the the shore, they have to make another pass around because torpedoes drop early. And he does have the shredder there. Magpie, Magpie's hip though. He's coming around the other side. The the cane moved though, so gets to live another day maybe maybe not magpie got that cane out of there but we're making a big land with setting he's making a big land push trying to drop torpedoes on him <laughs> but you know it works this is going to be pretty hard to push though um two doomsdays and three behemoths is not something that's fun to push against you do still have the two zulus not for long though. The Zulus are pretty much um, Berthos. So I mean you can see their range. He's hitting like all the way inside Twilight's base there from right here. It's probably just outside their range like they could shoot half this map about. So they're pretty much LRPCs uh, in the form of ships. The Canes, Canes and Ables are kind of like Bertha's. They have a little less range, but they're, they're artillery bombardment, pretty much. That's what was up in the corner here. Shelling the front line. It's a big rapier push coming in from Magpie. Uh, luckily, Seton has some vamps, so he makes 
quick work of them. Building up a small, uh, small force there. See if we can't get through, but I mean, we've got lots to get through over here. We've got something going on down here. Uh, seaplanes. Looks like I got some seaplanes up. Still think advanced naval would have been a better choice than seaplanes. But since they were bringing in advanced air, it did feel the need to get a counter. Twilight's getting a gantry up. You got the calm before the storm here. <laughs> um, lethal is advanced air. For some reason, he's got four inactive advanced vehicle plants. Um, he's got some Black Dawns up. I don't know the reason for all the advanced vehicle plants. I feel like that is... Like I'd say a waste of metal, but he's he's not starving on metal. But he could, you know, be maybe only have two because he's building what a sixth one. He could be pumping units out, and he could be using that metal because they're not cheap. Vamp push down here. A few um, a few black dons coming in. A vamp. Um, looks like Magpie's making a move to get rid of the water over here. He's got some vamps for cover, and then he's got his torpedo planes, torpedo bombers, to try and get in and uproot the sea. Looks like he did get a few patches of metal here, but Seton's just got an overwhelming amount of vamps here. Big hover push coming in on the south. Um, walking into the front line, I'm not sure why. This was probably the worst place for me to come in. I'm taking fire from Doomsdays, the Sams, Crows. I think I would have been better off coming in from the north and hitting Magpie there. Should have scouted. Uh, those are probably subs there. Got some gargoyles uh, coming in. Got this army of things to kind of cover them while they do the heavy lifting here. We got some reapers, some flackers, some hermes, and just a little extra firepower for ground stuff. Twilight, though, he's bringing in a Gavik, so great minds think alike. Sutton's coming in with some gargoyles. He's got the Yavik to counter. Magpie really sending in the air. We've lost all our AA that was traveling with them. So the rapier, Black Dawn's from Lethal, just making short work of everything. Another big um, T3 push here. Lots of... Uh, Cargonets. I always get the arm of the core names confused. Lots of Cargonets coming in, but they really don't hold a candle to the Yavik. Yavix and um, Bolos on the arm side are beasts. So we've got Yavik v Yavik here. Sentence was a little, uh, a little less injured. They're just passing by. They're old war buddies. <laughs> Old war bodies, just saying hi. Bit, a little big reaper push coming to intercept the Yavik here. And another Yavik, can't forget that part. Another Yavik intercepting this Yavik. I see what they did there. They, bo they both did the same thing. Yaviks pass each other like, ah, my other Yavik. My other Yavik will take care of that. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, we're doing not quite as big things here. If I was doing big things like Sentin... Oh, I'm doing big things. Okay. I He went Gantry. I went Nukes. He also went Nukes. We had the same idea. We did not plan this out, but... <laughs> we, <laughs> we didn't plan this out, but we did have the same idea. So now we have huge push coming in. What do we got for defenses here? We do have a Doomsday up. 
He's got a Doom Blade. He's got a Juggernaut come in. Juggernaut's a beast. They're slow, but man, they are armored and they're beefy. This is a this is a good push right here. We got a a Krogoff, a Yavik, and a Juggernaut. And then we've got some Mumbos, Penetrators, and some AA for for some support here. Bees just scavenging the battlefield for metal. We've got some advanced naval back up there. Ship Magpie. Ships are making a return up north. Unfortunately, I think I'm pelting him with all my penetrator shots, so that's not helping the Krogoth's case much. The AA is helping the Krogoth's case, though. This is a much better push than before, I feel. It does, it does include a Krogoth, so... Twilight moving in four Yaviks. I think he likes the Yavik. Krogoth just beasting it out over here. <laughs> They're taking them all on. Juggernaut's coming up from the back there. Lethal's bringing in the Black Dawns. They are really trying to get this down. Krogoth and Yavik down. Um, Twilight still has one Yavik left. We've got the Juggernaut coming in. Magpie's got his Krogoth coming. We are all set to nuke over here. I actually want to see what happens here. So, we both had the same idea. Make lots of nukes and nuke them to oblivion. Um, I remember I had big vamp push. I had about two nukes in each of those. So I had about ten nukes and he had one in each of these. So He had about eight nukes. So between us we had eighteen 18 missiles. Um, I learned. <laughs> I learned what not to do with nukes in this game. Big vamp push coming in, uh, just pushing his way through through all of Seton's AA. I unfortunately was not doing anything with my seaplanes. We're launching the nukes though. They're going off. We've got anti nukes flying. Look at that. <laughs> Anti nukes are flying out. Um, and I, I think because I launched them all so soon to each other, I blew up my entire base. I still have, you know, some stuff. Lost my geos. Um, let's take a look here. I mean, I'm making 500 energy or metal, so that's not a big deal. I don't even know where I'm getting 500 from. Okay. But we've got... So we lost... We just lost production pretty much. Um, We lost all the nukes except for one. I think we lost the hover. Lost the hover plant which is pretty much what I was using to get up here. I think it stopped working though. Most importantly, lost the friggin' nukes. Lost five nuclear missiles, um, pretty much. I think I took out some of Seton's stuff. I'm definitely took out some of Seton's uh, front line here. He, he lost like 20, um, 20 nanos, which were probably building things from the gantry. So that's that's a huge bummer. But I think the nukes, losing the nukes was probably the biggest hit because Lethal launching off his, a nuke of his own, I think. We've got two more, three more from Seton. Four, five. <laughs> 
five more nukes from Satin. Another nuke from Satin. We, I really think we could have won this. Uh, he's running out. My nuke didn't make it. One more nuke from me. More nukes from Setting going up. Two more anti nukes fired here. Three more anti nukes fired. Four more anti nukes fired. One of our anti nukes fired. <laughs> I'm trying to make more nukes to to help out because I mean shoot I put a lot of resources into that for it to just blow up in my face literally let's speed this back up real quick I really think we had enough silos to overwhelm them but losing losing all of mine kind of put us behind the curve there. So we have a big gantry push from Twilight and Magpie here. We've got, what, three Krogoths, four Gargoyles, five Gargoyles, one Krogoth down. The other one stopped moving. Gargoyles moving forward. See, we actually got through and hit Magpie. That's what I'm doing. If I had my four silos left, I think... I think that would have been great. So gargoyles just tearing stuff up. Pushing through. Got the ambush for firing them. Luckily they were getting caught on the wreckage of themselves. Lethal finally using his his damn uh, advanced labs. Building scarabs, probably a good idea. More nukes going out. Black Dawn's coming in. Black Dawn's are just beefy. I think they're getting... They're getting adjusted here soon. I think there's a few adjustments actually. I think we're. I, th I think he was thinking about looking. Taking a look. I don't know what he's doing, but he's going to take a look at the Mercuries and Screamers because they just don't feel up to par. More nukes coming out here. Got anti nukes coming to intercept. Well, this nuke might make it. What's he going for? I think he's nuking this. We have another nuke that's going to make it too. Looks like he was going for the geos there. If he moved a little bit further back, I think we would have been alright. I didn't see where that other one hit. And had he hit his advanced plants here. I don't know what I just marked. Got two Krogoths coming in though. Gargoyles trying to stall him. Once he catches up to those gargoyles though. Ah. He won't. <laughs> Gargoyles kiting the Krog off there. Making quick work. Black Dons coming in for support. Huge amounts of Black Dons. Trying to get these seaplane fighters in to uh, help out, but they just vanished. Lost our nukes. Lost our nukes. Meanwhile, they're piling up anti nukes. 
I don't know what this is. Trying to get in there with gremlins, it seems. Don't know what help I feel 10 gremlins are going to do, but... But our... <laughs> we are nearing our end here. We are getting our butts kicked. So gremlins are really cool. They're, they're stealth tanks. Um, they don't show up on radar, and they cloak. It takes a lot to uncloak them, too. You see, just ran into the scarab. It's not impossible, but... You can do stuff like that. <laughs> they are not that strong. That was absolutely the um, the behemoth blowing up the the thing trying to kill me, or maybe a bomber drop. More gargoyles pushing through with lots of stuff. Still trying to deal with krogoths. Krogoths are like never ending here. Don't know. Don't know what our plan is at this point. I think we've finally accepted defeat. There's not much left we can do. Tons of Black Dawns coming in. Can't really deal with them too well. They just... They get in and all it takes is a few shots. You see. There will be your base for a second. You lose it. Big mass of white headed in, uh, hovers and cobras, following a Krogoth, providing that air support, trying to get some advanced bombers to uh, do some work here, but it's really just a last ditch effort. I didn't even, even touch the Krogoth. I was hoping I could send some this way, but there are way too many flackers. Probably could have hit um, Twilight with them, but there's more concerning things on the plate here. It's just endless Krogoths coming in. Endless Krogoths. Got one here, one here, one back here, and we are struggling to do anything. I'm running out of energy. My commander's not staying cloaked. Lost him. And, uh... Trying to bomb lethal here. I should have gone for Twilight. I really should have gone for Twilight. Twilight was the one pushing on us. Really killing us. I should have done some better scouting. I mean... Had I come through like right here, like up through here, there are some flackers. So I would have had to, had I scouted correctly, I could have came from pretty much where this epoch's at, honestly. And I mean, there's probably some flackers back here, but I could have bombed out his gantry. I could have bombed out these behemoths would have been better to run straight for the gantry kind of knock out the flackers all this stuff it's got mercury's screamers i don't know if it would have succeeded it would have succeeded better than going for lethal though he's got heavy aa rebuilt the gantry i destroyed already they don't care they got the resources to do it but uh that's it for two versus three, I thought we had a pretty good showing. Um, in hindsight, you know, watching this demo, it definitely should have gone AA. Um, the nuke thing was the nuke thing was a bummer. I, I really feel like if we hadn't lost, if those nukes hadn't blown themselves up, we probably would have won the game because we got through the magpie, and that was pretty much setting only. Like, we had 18 to start with. We only got 9 off. I think... I think some of mine did trigger... Uh... The antis, though. So we maybe got 13 off. 
but ah, it's just a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Had we gotten all 18 off, I think we could have done some considerable damage, and then, I mean, it'd been pretty hard for them to play catch up with against, um, let's, would we have eight? Catch up against 13 nuke silos. But, uh, you know, it's an old game. Crap happens. Had I gone advanced naval, I really think that would have been good as well. Like, plus. Like, if I had Nable over here, I mean, you see the range. Like, we could have shelled out their front line completely. He could have got it from the north. I could have got it from the south. Um, then you have the Viking. I think that's it. Like, you hold fire and you fire at what I want you to fire at. I want to see, I think the Viking is the LRPC one. Maybe not, maybe not. Um, What are they called? So that's artillery, the able is, no, no, no. Atlantis, I don't know. I don't know what the command for that is, but it's just this dance of fighter planes. But I mean, an LRPC ship you've seen his his were right here, and they were shelling Twilight Space. We really could have done some damage if I had put my resources into advanced naval as well. Um, I think we could have won the game. That and the nukes. Um, like, I had the resources to do it. Advanced Naval would have been easy to throw up real quick, just get some stuff. And they would have had to worry about the sea on two fronts. I mean, we could have taken out a lot of Lethal's base here. Like, let's... That's not what I wanted. I mean, the front of it, we could have pretty much wrecked, or it could have pretty much wrecked, and then... Same thing, if I had the uh, the Atlantis, would have been really great. But, um, that's all. Let's end this real quick. Alright. So here, in terms of energy produced, lethal towered above everybody else. Um, myself and Magpie were... At the lowest there, pretty much at the same amount. I was a little bit lower. And then Setin and Twilight were pretty close as well. Twilight was a little bit higher. In terms of metal produced, Lethal again had the most. Um, followed by Setin, me, Magpie, then Twilight. But m pretty much uh, me, Magpie, Twilight, we were all hovering around the same range. Um, for like a, a big battle like that, I feel like we're all pretty close around the same amount uh of metal there access wise though me and Seton did terrible um we <laughs> we towered we towered in excess metal which is not a good thing if we had used that a little bit better we may have won i mean yeah magpies he's in six or uh five digits there <laughs> twilight he's only at twenty five thousand. Lethal, he, he managed to hit six digits, but we still doubled. <laughs> but anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.